Where's my manifesting machines out there? Are you guys ready to learn manifestation? Learning all the tricks to manifesting stuff? Yes, give me a heart if you're into that kind of stuff. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the secret. We're going to get into the secret. The secret they didn't tell you. The secret of the secret. The secret that they didn't teach you that is the key to manifesting everything you've ever wanted. Boy, it sounds so ominous. It sounds like one of those uh, telemarketing shows, doesn't it? You can be happy. Yes, you. Even you can be happy. <laughs> That's right. Well, today I'm going to teach you guys all the real tricks, all the stuff they didn't tell you. I've actually been talking about it for months on this show, but I'm going to put it all together tonight for you guys. And we're going to talk about the law of attraction and what it really means. All right, man, I've got a bunch of manifesting machines out there. The hearts are just going crazy, crazy. So good to see everybody in here. We've got a nice crowd. Awesome. So we're going to talk about the secret of secrets. <laughs> so the secret is that it's not really a secret. That's the secret. It's been around forever. The, the law of attraction and the idea of the mind reality relationship has been around since probably Egypt or before. If we're gonna if we're gonna really talk about things in, in, in sense of historical fact, so this is all the essence of Pythagorean study. This is what the Pythagoreans were all talking about. It's yes, it's that old. This is what the Kybalian is talking about. It's understanding that life is a is a frequency and a vibration. And if you can get with the vibration of what life is, you can sort of manipulate it to your benefit by just learning how to surf those vibrations. That's the really that's the key. Okay, so the key to realizing about manifestation is to realize that you're in a dream. That is, that is the secret nobody wants to talk about because that's crazy talk. But that's the kind of crazy talk that I talk about all the time on this show. So we could talk about crazy talk and we don't have to worry about people judging us, right? Because it's magic. That's right, right, Michelle. It's, this is magic with a K. Magic with a K. And you guys might be going, oh, magic. I don't want to do magic. That's kind of creepy. That's Satan, isn't it? No, magic is just magic. Magic is just a way of, of um, working when you're with the, between the mind reality relationship. Now, there could be black magic. You can do it, use it for evil intention and you can use it for bad things. So don't do that because you're going to create karma for yourself. And I don't want to hear from Satanists who tell me they know how to sidestep karma. You don't know how to sidestep karma. You know why? Because you don't know how to sidestep the ego. But until you learn how to do that, <laughs> you're, not, you're not, not manifesting anything through magic that you're not going to pay for in the end. So I'm so glad to see you guys. The, uh, this week I put out a picture that was a stereographic picture so that when you stare at it long enough, you can kind of see the, uh, a 3D image in this 2D image. Many of you guys follow me, you might have seen that in the comment section. So I, I posted that because I thought it was a perfect metaphor for self-realization. Something that you just stare at and it doesn't make any sense to you and you just keep staring and you just keep staring and then suddenly Oh my gosh, you start to make out this thing. And it's a it's a completely different dimension than the 2D surface. So it's a perfect metaphor for that. So if you're not following me, please subscribe and check me out. Go to the comments section. I post all stuff all, all, all the time on there. Yes, you guys can see it. I'm so glad you guys are able to see it. Good for you. All right, getting back to law of attraction. All right, so how are we going to manifest some things? And first, I'm going to tell you a couple things about law of attraction. We'll get into like where this all comes from. No, it does not come from the book The Secret. It was not a secret until the book The Secret came out. This is this is old. Like I said, it's very very old stuff. Um, it really came into modern practice. I would say modern at the turn of the 19th century, with Napoleon Hill, who wrote uh, Think and Grow Rich, a book called Think and Grow Rich where um, Napoleon had gone out and he had interviewed all the most successful people. And it took him like 30 years to write this book. He interviewed all the most su successful industrialists and, you know, the, the billionaires of his time and asked them what is their secret to manifesting such success. And they all had a commonality between all of them. They had several commonalities, but the main commonality was that all of them were very, very mindful of their focus and their attention. And they didn't allow their mind to drift into negativity. And that is the key, real key here. That is the trick to the secret. The secret is that I'm going to tell you everything you need to know today to manifest anything in the world you want. 
And I am living proof of this. I was a skeptic when I first learned about this stuff. And I can tell you from certainty, there is no limit to what you can manifest. And you guys might be laughing right now. Oh, that's ridiculous. No, no, believe me. And when I tell you how that is, it's going to blow your mind. And I'm going to give you all of the power in the world in this next 45 minutes to completely change your life forever in the most fantastic ways. Now, here's the, here's the, the problem with it. Only 1% of you are going to believe this enough to actually try it. But if 1% of you actually tries this, you're going to get results and you're going to be beside yourself and you're going to be a fan for life. So that part I'm excited about. And I hope that I can get more than 1% of you to try this because it really, really, really works. But you have to stay with it. And this law of attraction is about being mindful. It's about um, constantly being the observer of your thoughts, separating you from the ego that is playing your part separating yourself from the mask and observing not only what are you focused on but what are you thinking about what words are you speaking because all of this is going to play into what law of attraction is law of attraction is just to simply recognize the vibratory force of the universe and to realize that all of it is consciousness all of it there's no separation between you and the outside world it's all one dream and your body is a part of this dream and the dream, think of it as everything comes to agreeance for just a moment to satisfy the dream. But what aspect of the dream are they satisfying? They're, they're satisfying the, the, they're satisfying, they're coming together to satisfy the dreamer, the intention of the dreamer. And that dreamer can be you if you're focused on it, if you work at it, if you work on separating yourself from the mask and no longer being a participant in the dream, but being the master of the dream. So today's talk is about being a dream master who's with me. You guys ready to be a dream master? So um, going back in history, some other people you should really, really check out with, you should make this part of your daily practice. I, I highly, highly recommend listening to Neville Goddard. He is going to turn off a lot of you but I think that he is probably the best teacher of this, um, of this subject. Um, Abraham Hicks is also really, really good, but I kind of like Neville's delivery better. It just, um, it just resonated with me better, but there's a lot of people who like Abraham Hicks. Um, Abraham Hicks is a woman named Esther Hicks, and she um, channels um, the collective identity of spiritual identity of Abraham, who's a, who's a we, not, a, not an I. Yeah, a lot of people ask me what I think about channelers, Bashar particularly. That's how I feel. So um, anyway, getting back to um, the law of attraction. And to realize too that with this method, anything is possible. There's nothing that you can't attract for yourself. Now, when you attract these things, you're also attracting the karma that comes with it, which might be good karma and it might be negative karma. But there's going to be karma. There's going to be change in your life. When you, when you ask for change to come into your life, well, you're going to get change, are you not? And those change, that, that change is going to have good aspects and it's going to have bad aspects. There's always going to be consequences to everything. And those consequences we call karma. Right? Now, part of that karma is to, you're going to realize, and I'm hoping that some of you, many of you have realized already by watching these episodes, that the first thing you're going to want to do, um, because when you're when you begin the spiritual journey, the first thing that you're looking for is you're looking for spirit to rescue you. So you're looking for spirit to come in and be the savior, which it's not. That's not going to happen on your spiritual path. It will save you eventually, but it's not going to save you through material things. So the material things are they only take the pain away for a minute. So you get a nice fancy car, right? It takes the pain away for a minute. And a few months later, you're kind of over it. You can manifest a new house, really awesome, right? It changes your life, it's awesome. And then six months later, maybe something breaks and it's getting expensive and you're starting to realize the, the real burden of owning a house, right? So these are the kind of consequences that I'm talking about um, that, that are hard to foresee, but if you know that they're part of the, the materialization aspect that 
that there's this good karma and bad karma that come with it, then you'll enjoy it. The other thing I want to tell you about manifesting things is that what you're going to realize is that to really, really achieve the things that do um, make the heart light and change your life in ways that make you a happier person are very, very far away from material things. As a matter of fact, you're going to realize that the material things get in the way of that. They're, they're a distraction from you working on the thing that is going to bring you that peace. So keep that in mind too when you're materializing things. You know, you might uh, manifest a new career for yourself or you might manifest uh, whatever aspect you might be manifesting for yourself. That will probably become a distraction from your spiritual growth. So just keep that in mind too. So these are the trade-offs. This is the trade-offs of doing magic. I'm always talking about that there are, you know, there's consequences to magic. Well, this is what I'm talking about. You also don't want to be trying to use law of attraction on other people, right? That would be black magic. You don't want to be using it for to send uh, energy, good or bad, to other people. That's that's not your. That's not for you to do mess with. Everyone's on their journey, and they're on the journey that they need to get them to wake up. So you don't want to interfere with that. Right? You should always only be working on yourself. It's the only thing you need to be working on. So if you have children, you won't think you're gonna law of attraction things for them. Don't don't do that. They're on, they're on their journey, and sometimes it's painful to see them go through things. But you're gonna realize that the the painful bumps are part of a part of awakening, and you're gonna need those. Okay, you guys with me? Man, look at this crowd. It's awesome. You guys are awesome. The other thing about uh, law of attraction is that these miracles that you might think that you're going to manifest, they're always going to come in the linear uh, appearance. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, uh, they're going to come, in the, come through the dream. They're going to show up through the dream. So it's, the, they're, it's going to appear to you to arrive as linear causality, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's say that you wished for a million dollars, for example. Well, a million dollars isn't just going to dump out of the sky and land on your lap, right? It doesn't work like that. It's going to have to come to you through the dream. So maybe you go to the store and you scratch a ticket, a lottery ticket, and then that lottery ticket, you win a million, win a million dollars, right? You see how it would have to show up in the dream? So this is the way the miracles work. As I said, the dream is happening because you've got all these little subatomic particles, right, coming together, and everything is coming together in an agreement. It's like there's an agreement to create the moment for yourself. And it just comes together for just a moment, just this moment. That's how precious this moment is. That every particle came to agreement to create this experience just for you, for just that moment. So, um, so realize that is also the mechanics of how the law of attraction works. You guys with me? Right on. So, and the other thing about this too, the law of attraction is going to be requiring you to get a hold of your thoughts and mind. And it's a practice. It's a daily practice. And you have to stay with it, right? You can't just do, uh, you can't just show up to the gym once and then expect to be, have it all together, right? You got to, you got to go and you got to work at it. And it's going to be, it's going to be tough and it's going to be exhausting. And some days are going to be some days you're going to feel like you don't want to do it. Well, it's the same thing with manifestation. You got to work at it. You got to work at it all the time. And you're going to have to you're going to realize that what magic essentially is is sympathetic resonance. It's it's the same exact principle that I'm using with the music uh, over on Phi Tribe and with the music you're listening to now. I'm using frequencies to evoke these emotions in you. They're, they're specifically designed to em help you emote certain emotions. So I'm taking you on a journey with this music. It's more than just music. There's something beneath the surface that is acting on you. And that thing that is working, that is operating on you, is called sympathetic resonance. So uh, a, a great way to understand sympathetic resonance, you ever been driving in your car and you get to a traffic, to a traffic light and there's a car next to you and it's playing like loud bass music, right? Boom, boom, right? And then all of a sudden your mirror starts vibrating inside your car. 
that's sympathetic resonance. That's a way to think about sympathetic resonance. Or maybe um, you've got something making a chimey noise in the house and it's causing the table to vibrate across the room, right? That's sympathetic resonance. So essentially what you want to do is you want to match what's happening. It's like the, when the coffee table vibrates to match the frequency over here or the mirror in the car vibrates to match this frequency. It's they're they're resonating at the same frequency which is why this is what the connection is it's the it's the they're both resonating at the same frequency now the mirror is smaller and may not be doing bass music but it's certainly doing a harmonic of what the bass music is does that make sense so it's the harmonics that you want to get at okay you think be thinking well i'm not sound how do i do this in life how do i do sympathetic resonance in life and are you ready this is the big secret Act as if. All right, that'll be all. Good night, guys. <laughs> it's to act as if. What does that mean? Act as if it's already happening. That is how you get your vibration to vibrate as if it's already happening, which will tell the universe, the consciousness that is, that this is what you're asking for. So you do it with your focus. You focus your thoughts and your vibes all on the thing that you want the most and you act as if it has already come to fruition in your life. So when you say things, it's not like, um, it's not like manifesting a car. Like I, you know, I wish I had a blue car and I wish it was really fast and it was really exotic and I wish I had, okay. It's not like that. It's. It's to get inside your car. Let's say it's a car that you want, right? You get inside your car and you drive around and maybe you drive around and you're like, I my car. You know, I hate how this thing is. It's a junker, blah, 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 blah. Maybe, maybe whatever it is. Or I've had this thing forever and I'm over it, right? Get in your car and scrooch down, right? And pretend like a child pretends you want to play. Because as children, we enter the kingdom of heaven, right? You want to play as if you're driving the car of your dreams, right? If it doesn't have a stick shift and when you're manifesting as a stick shift, you can just pretend you're doing the shift and get into it and feel it, feel it with every fiber of your being of what that's like. Imagine the sound, turning it on and the rum, whatever it is, you know, and the gripping that steering wheel and imagining what that's gonna be like with the steering wheel of that car you really, really want. You might want to even go down and look at the car that it is that you want and sit in the driver's seat so you have so you can really get, you know, pretend that you're buying it, right? Just get in so you can get all the details of what it would be to own that car. Be what it would be, see what it would be like, right? But what I'm getting at is you want to recreate all of those details in your mind every single time you get in your car. Every time. Now it takes 21 days to break a habit. And it's the same thing with manifestation. I'm not saying that if you do this for 21 days, you're going to manifest what you want. But I'm saying it, it takes 21 days to break your previous habits, which is I hate my life. I hate my car. I hate my bag. I hate my hair. All that kind of stuff that we all that self-talk that we do that that tells the universe that this is what we this is what we don't. This is what we want more of. We want more of hating our hair. We want more of hating our life. We want more of hating. Right. We're speaking these things into existence. We're speaking them with with words right uh, abracadabra as I say on the show all the time abracadabra means I create what I speak that's the definition of abracadabra I create what I speak and you create with what you focus on whatever you're focused on that's what you're going to create more of okay so be mindful of your focus be mindful of your words and you'll start to manifest these things into your life now if you've never manifested anything before don't start off with crazy things right if you start off with crazy things what's gonna happen is they're not gonna come very fast and you're just gonna get frustrated and you're gonna quit right so what I want you to do is I want you to start with very small things that anybody can do and I want you to do this for a while because what we're doing is we're building up your faith in what I'm telling you. Because it's the faith, it's the conviction that's going to make it work for you. 
And when you start manifesting small things on a regular basis, you're going to be so blown away that this is working. It's going to give you the conviction to go for the bigger things. Okay? You guys with me? The bigger thing that you want, the bigger the stretch of the imagination that it would take for you to manifest this thing, means these are all the complex details that would have to unfold, the miraculous unfolding of an infinitude of details to bring this to you, right? That takes time. Often that takes time, sometimes not, but more than likely that takes time because all these different scenarios have to unfold for this to come into your life. Like say, for example, you wanted a new house. Well, if you're not making enough money for a new house, then you're not going to just magically have a new house. You're going to have to do something that's going to make it to put you in a position to have this house that it is as you want. Like I said before, either you're going to win the lottery somehow. Well, you have to actually go and play, don't you? You have to create these windows of opportunity for the universe to, um, to materialize your dreams for you. This is what's taking the action step, right? Create as many avenues for the universe to take to bring these things to fruition. For example, maybe what it's required for you getting a new house means you have to get a new career, right? So those things have to take time to unfold, but by just saying that this is what you want, you started the ball of motion to bring it to you. Does that make sense? You guys with me? So starting with, um, starting with something small, I'll just tell you something that I started with. I started with manifesting quarters right quarters like coins right little quarters and if you're from a different country watching this just start with whatever coin you know is a reasonable coin I for us for me I did quarters because quarters are um, it's just big enough of a coin that you wouldn't just leave it behind it's like okay everyone tries to collect you know no one leaves a quarter behind so much they might leave a penny behind or a nickel behind or dime behind because it's literally worthless and quarter is too these days but just go with the quarter right it's a, such a small thing, it's easy to find, right? So what I would do is I would just get myself in a meditative position and I would just go through using my imagination. I would just imagine being able to find quarters everywhere I go. And I would say, today I'm gonna find quarters. And I would just visualize myself walking and picking up a quarter. I visualize myself at a restaurant finding a quarter on the floor or something. I'd visualize myself walking around the mall and I find a quarter. Or maybe I get, um, you know, maybe it's an extra quarter somewhere else that I didn't, you know, somebody, you get a quarter from uh, something you didn't expect. Maybe not necessarily a coin on the, on the, on the floor, but maybe uh, extra money somehow that you didn't expect and it's 25 cents. But getting to the, the point of this, set your intention to do that and start practicing in your mind finding quarters. And come up with as many weird ways you can come up with to find quarters. Don't just visualize them finding on the floor. Just try to come up with all kinds of crazy ways that the 25 cents will come to you. Now, once you start doing that, um, you're gonna be amazed because you're probably gonna find two quarters that day. You know, and if you don't, don't get discouraged. Just, just try, just stick with me for the 21 days and I guarantee you it's gonna blow your mind. Guaranteed. So start with the small things like that, and maybe you have a better thing to, to start with. That's a small thing that would be a that would be a really nothing thing to happen, right? Doesn't require very many changes to reality, and, and doesn't require too much additional complexities to to bring that fr to fruition. An extra quarter doesn't require much extra input at all, right? And what that's going to do is it's going to allow that in your mind to be very believable like eh, it's it's a miracle but it's not really a miracle it's just kind of eh, it's okay but if it if you're able to do that four or five days in a row then it's not quite so much of a miracle is it it's kind of like hmm there's something to this right and that's what i'm talking about by by doing that you're going to build up your faith in this you do these little things enough and you're going to start to have this overwhelming like wow of faith into this um, start f focusing on the clock, you know, noticing when it's 1111, noticing when it's 444 or 333 or 222, right? Give that some of your attention and then see how many more times that week it'll show up for you. 
just by you focusing on it. Right? The universe wants nothing more than to fulfill your intention and desires. That's what it wants to do. The problem is we're constantly giving it messed up uh, directions where we tell it one thing and then we act another way and it doesn't know what to bring us. Okay. Like this, maybe you say, Oh, I wish I had a new house and blah, blah, blah. I wish I had a new career and wish I had all these things. Right. And then the next day you have self-talk where you walk around your house. I hate my place. I hate my life. I hate my, right. So you've, you've given this request to the universe to bring you something with your focus because you're focused on all these beautiful things. And before the universe has gotten a chance to even start to manifest any of that stuff for you, the very next day you're doing self-talk of hate, giving more instructions to bring you to another place that's going to bring you all this negativity. Because bring you to negativity, if you're already at a place of negativity, it's not really far of a jump, right? <laughs> it's pretty close by. So if I'm focusing on all the negative things in my life, that's what we're going to get, right? Focus is the key. It's whatever your attention is, you're going to get more of. So for example, if you guys ever had a morning where you woke up in the morning and you stub your toe, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, you woke up late and you stub your toe in the thing and all of your attention is on being late and on your stub toe. And then maybe you can't find your wallet or your purse or you lost a button on your, on your clothes or you break your shoelace. And then you get to work and you get a speeding ticket on the way to work, right? It's, it's this spiraling cascade of unfortunate events because you're focused on these things. You're focused on these things that are getting your emotions up in this agitative state. But what you've done is you've verbally spoken into existence things that you don't want and you use difficult to bring in things that you don't want, even though you know you don't want them, but you're doing it out of habit. So what I'm talking about is breaking these habits. You have to break the habits of negative talk. If you have negative talk, you got to immediately stop. You have to catch yourself. If you, if you start saying things like, I'm so dumb, blah, 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 you have to immediately catch yourself and say, I'm so brilliant, man. And think of something brilliant you've done to remind yourself of how brilliant you are. Or you have a self-talk of, I'm so ugly. Oh my gosh, I'm so terrible. Well, go stand in front of the mirror for 10 minutes to remind yourself that you're not as ugly as you think you are. Do those things to undo it. You have to undo these things. Um, I was privileged to learn the Silva method, which is a method of manifesting, um, which is a whole thing. I'll, 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 de I'll dedicate a whole episode to that. But part of the Silva method is if you catch yourself saying something negative or derogatory about yourself, you have to immediately undo it with words. So if your words were negative self-talk, you have to immediately replace it with self, with positive self-talk. So part of the Silva method is, is it catching yourself saying something negative and then saying, like you go, oops, oh, I said next something negative. And then I want you to repeat these words. Um, I create, delete, destory across all time, space, dimensions, and reality. Anything to do with what I just said about myself being ugly or dumb. So I'll say that again. I uncreate, delete, destory across all time, space, and dimensions any idea that I am ugly or dumb. Right. So I've undone, I've undone the negative karma I'm creating with my words, abracadabra, and my thoughts of focus. You see that? See what I'm doing there? You're constantly manifesting everything. People want to know how to do law of attraction. It's already happening. You're already doing it. This is the most important thing to understand. You're already doing it. Everything in your life. The good and the bad has arrived to you out of the law of attraction. Everything. This is one of the hard, hard truths about awakening to spirituality. And this is the part they don't tell you about because it's not a good sales pitch, but you're already doing it. 
Everything amazing in your life, you've talked that into existence. Everything negative in your life, you've talked that into existence. Everything positive, you've talked that into existence. It's you. You are the dream master, and you're doing it with your thoughts, your words, and your focus. Now, now I said before how difficult this is to remember to be mindful of your words and be mindful of your thoughts. This is the catch-22 of Law of Attraction. When you first start Law of Attraction, you think, I'm going to manifest material things to make me happy. But as you start to manifest these, as these things start to come into your life, you're going to realize that the way to get really good at at manifesting things is to break the habit of the negative self-talk. The negative self-talk is coming from the things that you're manifesting. So this is the catch-22. This is why you want to be careful. You don't, want to, you don't want to be bringing in, manifesting too many things that are going to be distracting you that much more, preventing you from being able to stay true to your ability to be focused and mindful. For example, let's say you were trying to start a business and you just did all these magical words and thoughts to bring, to manifest great success for your business, right? But now your business has got you so busy and so hectic and so frantic. Yes, you're making a lot of money, but you're so busy all the time that you have no time anymore to devote to, devote to spiritual studies. And then you fall off the path and then things start going crap again. These are the paths. This is these. I speak about these things because these are very typical paths along the path of spiritual awakening. I'm not the only one that talks about this. Many people write about this. This is part of the great humbling, as Joseph Campbell calls it. We start manifesting our dreams, and then we get sucked into our dreams, and we lose all of our spiritual um, gnosis, and it all falls away. And that's when you crumble really, really hard. That's a really difficult lesson that every one of you are going to go through, like it or not. But it's a beautiful thing if you can just maintain your composure and maintain your awareness of what you're going through. So these are kind of the, the things to be cognizant of once you start doing the Law of Attraction. I'm not speaking ill of Law of Attraction. I'm not speaking ill of magic. These are very powerful things to start with. But um, just be mindful of, of the Pandora's box that you're opening by doing this. How many people out there have a vision board? Throw up some hearts if you have a vision board. You should have a vision board. You should, you should spend time creating a vision board. And if you're like, oh, I'm too lazy. I don't make a vision board. I just want to watch TV. I don't want to. It's just, it's because the things, they require energy of you. And this energy and devotion into making a vision board is you practicing magic, right? That's why you do it. It's, it's, and if you don't know how to make a vision board, what you do for a vision board is just go through some magazines and stuff and cut out pictures of things that you might want to manifest into your life. You can cut out pictures of houses or purses or cars or whatever it is you want, baby babies or whatever, and put these things up on a vision board. And but it's the practice of looking for the thing that you want to manifest. It's the practice of cutting it out. It's the practice of putting glue on it and creating this collage of all these things. It's all of that as part of the ritual, right? Because with each step, you're putting a tremendous amount of focus on it. As you're cutting out your house, how much focusing are you doing on that house as you cut it out, right? A lot. So you want to make your vision board with the utmost integrity. It's not something you just got to slap together. You want to spend time on it and work on it and be diligent about it and be willing to make changes to it because as you become more aware and as you manifest smaller things, probably the things that you want to manifest next are going to change because you're going to have more faith into this. Okay? Um, you know, something else I, I used to do, I wanted more money at the one time when I was trying to learn this. So I went to the bank and I used the AT machine and I took out a withdrawal for a million dollars on the thing just to see those numbers up on the screen. Now, of course, it came back in insufficient funds, but I went through the act numerous times 
of withdrawing that amount, just punching that number into the machine just so I could see that on the screen, that kind of stuff. Now, I said before that you can manifest anything, right? And I mean anything. The greatest things I have in my life or have had in my life came through manifestation. And every time they came with total astonishment, complete astonishment. I don't, there's no other way to say it. Um, when I was first starting out in the music business, I had a little one room apartment. I would come home from work, exhausted from a long day in the studio. And I would just look up at the wall and I, in my dining room, I didn't have a dining room table, but I just had this space and I had the wall with the little canister lights in my apartment. And I took the canister lights out and I put like really cool lights up, you know, and I made this space on a wall. I kind of framed it out, even though it was nothing there. And I would sit on my couch and I would visualize in that wall and say, someday I'm going to have gold records on that wall. Someday they're going to have gold records on that wall. Because I thought in my young, naive mind that having gold records on the wall was going to solve all of my problems. That if I just had those gold records on the wall, all of, the, all of my problems would be gone. That was a very naive mind, but clearly it worked, right? I devoted my attention to that. That blank canvas of a wall was my vision board. This is what I wanted, these things, these things. Because that to me meant success. And it is success but it didn't bring happiness. Success doesn't actually mean happiness. Success is just success. And they're completely separate from each other. It's awesome. You guys are awesome. And there's no limit to what you can manifest. There really is no limit. So a few of the things I have manifested, aside from a, <laughs> from being fortunate enough to have a thriving YouTube channel, which is awesome, but I manifested working with the number one singer in the world. I manifested working with the, the, the number one rap group in the world. I, never, I manifested working with all of these crazy things in my life. I mean, all kinds of crazy things. And I did it through mindfulness and monitoring what I'm saying. Now. I go through periods too. There's, there's periods of life you can go through where you fall off the wagon. You know, you're having a bad time and it's very difficult to remain mindful when you fall off the wagon. This is where you want to have good friends, good friends or, or spouse or family who can, who can be that, that ass kicking that you need. You know, when someone, someone who is um, separate from you, separate from your challenges to notice when you're doing negative self-talk. Somebody who can be like, hey, 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 don't don't do negative self-talk. Say it like this, because you, that that might make you mad to have someone correct you. But you have to realize you're caught up in it, which is why you're having negative self-talk. The person telling you not to have negative self-talk isn't caught up in it like you. So they're able to see it from a removed perspective. They're able to re, to take a step back from their mask and observe you struggling, right? So it's good to be surrounded with people like that, that you may want to have this conversation with people and be like, you know, you might want to teach them what I'm teaching you and you guys can do it together so you could be supportive of each other and to constantly remind each other when you're falling off the wagon. Because when you're sucked into the dream, it's really easy to get caught up in it and forget, you know, it happens to everybody. But, and mindfulness takes time. This, this, this ability to separate yourself from the mask, that's you takes time and you have to be patient with that don't get frustrated with it because it will come it will come to you so amazingly that it's hardly a thought for me now it's just the slightest things pull me out of it and uh, I don't allow myself to get too terribly sucked into the dream I get upset sometimes like sometimes I take things I like to win so sometimes I take things a little serious and I get bummed out if things aren't doing as well as I wanted them to. But I'm usually really good, really good about catching myself. I can usually catch myself pretty quickly and pull myself out of it. And that's only been in the last few years. Like there's, you know, 
four years ago or so, I struggled terribly with that stuff. And for, and then, like, it just suddenly just got easy. I don't know what to say. Just suddenly got easier. So there's no limit to what you can manifest. Even I even put on a on a way to man part of my manifesting is I wanted to fly. All right, I thought how cool would it be to fly. So I've told this story on another previous show, but um, I would create these little gift boxes. Um, and my ex wife at the time we would give them out as party gifts to people. But as a beautifully elaborately wrapped gift, and inside the present was a little note with a place to write down your dreams. And you write down three wishes, and you put a lot of focus and intention into it. And you put that note into the box, and then you put this beautiful box up on a shelf or somewhere you're going to see it every day, so that when you see this box, every time you see it, you say a little prayer to yourself or a little note to yourself that whatever whatever it is that you have to say to manifest that into your life. So in my little box, I manifested everything I put in that box, as ridiculous as it was, came true. All of it came true. Every single one of those things came true. Now, it comes through through dream. So one of the wishes in there was that I wish that I could fly. Right? I wish that I could fly. I wish I knew what it would be like to fly like a bird. Right? What would that be like? Now, clearly, that's not going to happen, right? But knowing that it comes through the dream, I knew that it would come through some sort of like a dreamlike way. Like maybe it would be a jetpack or some sort of platform I stand on or some kind of crazy thing, you know? So, but nonetheless, I started manifesting that. I started putting my focus attention on the ability to fly. I kind of forgot about it. I just kind of like let it go. I was kind of like, ah, that one's probably not going to come true. But I was happy with everything else coming true. And then last Christmas, I bought a toy for myself. I bought this um, FPV, a first person drone. So you guys know what it's like. And this is a thing that you put goggles on. And I have a little drone with a remote control, and I can fly around the neighborhood by sitting on my couch. And I can this thing can fly all around the neighborhood, and I'm experiencing the flying first person in my 3D goggles. So I manifested the the ability to fly. But do you see how it came in the dream? Right? You might be like, you did manifest flying. I did. Because the experience is the exact experience of flying. It feels just like flying. The drone goes wherever I want it to go. And it's a complete 3D, full immersive experience at my goggles. So it didn't come exactly the way I imagined it coming, but it still fulfilled the law of attraction. The want was still met. It materialized and manifested. Do you guys have any questions? Let's see, we got Foxy Joe's saying, hold on, let me put my glasses on so I don't squint. I noticed that last time I was squinting. Okay, here we go nerdy version foxy joe is it possible i have manifested you and your channel yes it's quite possible foxy you've manifested me if if you've been wanting for someone like me to come into your life then i can guarantee you that i am part of that law of attraction that your your focused and desire for someone like me to come into your life is what attracted me into your life for sure through sympathetic resonance absolutely and thank you that was very sweet that's right, Michelle, there are no coincidences. I love you too, you're awesome, HD. Yeah, so some things that you should check out to uh, learn more about this stuff. Um, Think and Grow Rich is a great book by Napoleon Hill. He's a great book. And uh, actually, Napoleon Hill uh, also wrote another book that I like even more, which I would say is one of my top five reads. And it's called Interview with the Devil. And uh, yeah, that book is really, really amazing. Really, really amazing. And uh, I won't give it away, but you should definitely check that book out. And it basically just gets into um, all of the pitfalls of manifesting. This, this is all the ways that the adversary that I talk about in the show, the adversary, all the tricks the adversary uses to pull you off of your ability to manifest the dream life that you're looking for. The, the adversary is a hard at work to make you forget to work on this, which is why I said only 1% of you are going to go home and work on this tonight. And if, if that, maybe 1% of you, maybe 10% of you will do it, but 1% of you is going to actually do it for 21 days. 
It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. But try it. Be consistent with it. Just take five minutes a day. Make a note for yourself. You know, you should put your, your vision board maybe up, hang it up in the bathroom, something that you see every single day when you're brushing your teeth. And as you're brushing your teeth, just look at that vision board and just go, man, I'm so grateful to that, that I live in that mansion and so grateful that I'm driving my yellow Lamborghini to work today and so happy to have the dream life, the dream wife and beautiful children. And I have this, uh, all these awesome vacations on this vision board. Act as if and be thankful that they have already arrived in your life. That's what a vision board is for. Get in your car and scooch down. Imagine what it would be like to be driving a Bentley. Whatever it is. Right? Whatever it is that you want. If you're interested in a new house, you should go look at houses. Even if you can't afford them. Just go look. It's to create the details. To put those details into your mind. All those details are what you're going to use. Those, those details are your building blocks for your magic spell. And that's what this is. It's a magic spell. You're lining up your thoughts and actions with fractality. And the more fractality you can have, the more compounding vibrations focused on one thing, when you have enough of them, it's like a direct line to bring that into the dream that you're in. Why do you think so many new age law of attraction teachers here are so expensive? Legit people who charge thousands for a course kind of confusing to me. Yes, because there are suckers born every minute. That's why there are. <laughs> There's a sucker born every minute. There's nothing that they can teach you that I'm not telling you right now. Believe me, I've done them all. They're going to have great inspirational stories. Um, there's a few that I, I admire and like very, very much um, like that I've already mentioned. Um, even Tony Robbins is pretty awesome. These are, these are great teachers for this stuff, but they're not going to tell you anything more about Law of Attraction than what I've just told you. It's just practice. You have to work at it. It's not, it's not a one-time take a pill and it works. It doesn't work that way. It's like... I want to do karate. Well, you're not just going to take a pill and learn how to do karate. It doesn't work that way. You have to go and learn karate, right? It's the same thing with this. Everything you need to know, you can just watch this video 50 times. But um, <laughs> it's, all, it's all here. But I'll break it down for you again. Watch what you say. Thoughts become things. Watch what you're focused on with your mind. Watch what you speak. Abracadabra follow through with your action steps so don't don't mismatch don't misalign your action step with what your intention is if your intention is to get off from the couch and have a brilliant career and that's what you're manifesting for yourself but then you sit on the tv all day and watch sit in front of the couch all day and watch tv and don't do anything about it there's a misalignment between your intention and your action step that can't be that can't happen everything has to be in alignment your thoughts your focus your words and your actions all have to be in alignment and once all of that is in alignment and you get the momentum going the momentum is going it's kind of like starting those old like starting a llama or you pull the string you have you have you have to be the one to get it going you get it going with your intention and your action step and then the motor will kick over and bring it to you for free start with small things start with manifesting quarters Start with um, going to a restaurant and getting an extra helping. I don't know. <laughs> Free dessert. Start with small things like that. And be amazed that they happen. And they will happen. I promise. I promise. A lot of people ask me to talk about the, the, um, my little mantras that I do in the morning. To remind myself that I'm dreaming... And this is the key, again, the, the key to the law of attraction is to realize you're dreaming, to realize you are an avatar in a dream. You're not going to hear that at any law of attraction school. They're not going to talk about this because that is next level spirituality. And with great power comes great responsibility. So when I'm, when I'm telling you these things, I want you to take it in as truth, but to realize that just because it's a dream doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. There's there's a discipline to it. And yes, you could do anything you want, but you could hurt yourself really bad. 
you're going to create a, a lot of bad situations for yourself. So you have to do it with mind. You have to be mindful with all of this to realize that there is no separation between who you think you are and the outside world. You are one symbiotic thing. It's your one being and the being doesn't stop at the end of your fingers. It, it, the, the entire dream is me. The entire dream that you're experiencing is you. And you just got to communicate to it. <laughs> Jeff wants me to talk about my car. No, I'm not going to talk about my car. But I already did. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff wants me to talk about my car. Just I manifested a Viper in my life. I wanted a Viper really, really bad. And didn't know how I was going to get it. And started doing that. Started getting down, scratching my butt down in my car and pretending it was a sports car. And even though it was an automatic, I would pretend I was going through... Sh you know, shifting gears. And then circumstances just unfolded, not even just a few months later. And I got a huge bonus that I did not expect. And that bonus was more than enough to pay for more than half the car. So um, I bought the car. And I can tell you a hundred stories like that, that are just, they're so unbelievable but they're true and they happen. But I can't convince you by telling you my story. The best, the best you can do to convince yourself is to do it yourself and start with small things. Just the smallest things. How many synchronicities, how many coincidences can you create with your mind before you believe that there are no such things as coincidences? Thank you, Paige. <laughs> and that's it. You guys are awesome. I love you all so much. Thank you guys for joining me. And send me a comment. Send me a like. And give me a topic idea. I'll be glad to do it. Good night, guys. Love you very much. Take care. Bye.